Hey guys, Chris from Drift Outfitters here, and today I'm going to show you a little secret. I'm going to show you my uh, number one steelhead fly for Ontario. It's tube fly. Uh, it's a really easy tie, which I think is great. Uh, I think you guys are going to dig it. So, um, to start off, this is a 4040 uh, Pro Flexi Tube, uh, Pro Sport Fisher Flexi Tube. That is so 40 millimeters uh, thin tubing, 40 millimeters thick. As I've said in other videos, I don't usually actually tie on all this front stuff here. I cut it kind of short. Tip for you, if you don't want to waste these, you can actually tie flies on these little waist ends too, if you want to tie smaller stuff. And these uh, two ends, the two diameters here, if you have waste from both, they will actually link up to each other. You can glue them back together and make another tube. So if you want, you can reuse those. Um, but yeah, just to start this, we're going to cut that about halfway back, like so. Get that on our adapter good and tight. And for the thread on this, this is a 10 aught black Vivas. Get that going just ahead of that uh, thinner tubing there, just ahead of that, uh, that junction. Snip off our excess, and we'll just carry this back a little bit. Now this is going to be a little bit of a smaller fly. I, I find myself tying this one more in smaller sizes because this is kind of a bright tube. Um, and general rule of thumb, at least for me, and I've heard this before, and others have taught me this, is that um, just in general, not necessarily trout or steelhead or anything, but brighter flies, smaller sizes, more natural stuff, larger sizes. Um, you know, you're tying something fairly bright here, it's going to get lots of attention from fish. You don't need to overdo it on the size and risk spooking them. Now that's a rule of thumb. Rules are meant to be broken, and I can definitely point to plenty of instances where I fished large and bright flies with success. But uh, yeah, generally I find myself tying this slightly smaller. So I've taken my wraps back here, um, you know, probably about halfway back uh, on this thicker tubing, maybe a little shy of that. And I'm just going to start, I've tied in, sorry, I skipped ahead there. This is a large pearl tinsel from Vivas, I've tied in a short length. And I'm just going to start by wrapping this back from my furthest back thread wraps, about two turns and forward, a couple of turns, like so. Now, the reason I don't uh, wrap my thread all the way back and then come over my thread with the tinsel is the tinsel, because it's translucent, will pick up any color underneath it. So it'll end up being this kind of, it's actually kind of a cool look. It's like, um, it's like a black opal kind of look. It can be a neat look if you're using black thread, but in this case, I like the just straight pearl tinsel. Now, uh, body on this guy, actually, before I get ahead of myself, this is our tail material. This is a uh, hot pink fluorofiber. Uh, fluorofiber is an amazing material for tubes. It is like the go-to gold standard for uh, tailing materials for tubes. You can use other stuff, but this it's a nice sort of blend of it's got a little bit of stiffness, a little bit of coarseness, so it builds up like a, you know, a noticeable um, tail. It's got some presence, but it's uh, it's fairly soft still. It moves nicely in the water, and it's just obviously very bright. It really gets attention. So this is the hot pink color. I'm going to take a small length of fibers here. I'm going to cut that full length here, like so. I'm going to actually bring my thread up at least to about the midway point on the body. I'm going to double that fluorofiber over my thread. And I'm going to tie it down there. And I'm going to pull up on that fluorofiber and wrap back over it to keep it on top, right back to where that pearl tinsel ended, like so. Put a few more wraps over top, lock everything in there. And then I'm going to trim this fluorofiber. I want to trim this on a little bit of an angle. I don't want to cut it just square. That doesn't look very good. So we're going to cut a short tail, maybe an inch long or so, on a little bit of a taper. So you can see how that tail has a little bit of a point to it. It's not all square, that could even have a little more taper. Take a little off there. There we go. It's a nice kind of pointed, tapered tail. Now for the back half of this body, we're going to just use, this is a purple holographic Mylar from uh, Vivas. This is a large. The large is just way easier and quicker to cover the body up. I'm going to take a decent length. I'm going to tie this in here, wrap it back and forwards, and that's going to take a fair bit of material, so make sure you do have enough that you can comfortably kind of do that with. 
And if we imagine the body is going to be this entire uh, thicker stretch of tubing, not so much the thinner stuff up here, then you know, ideally the, the back half of this body, this purple, is going to be half of it. And I'm going to use some dubbing for the front half. That's going to be the forward half. That said, when we pick out our dubbing, um, even if we don't really pick out our dubbing, it will eventually get picked out by fish's teeth and stuff. It's going to veil the back half of the body a little bit. So what I like to do is actually tie a little bit more than half in the tinsel and then let that picked out dubbing kind of cover up the rest and balance it out. Drop my tinsel spool there. Oops. Tie that in again here. All right, so we're just going to take wraps and you want to be fairly firm with these wraps so they don't slide around on you. Just touching turns. Back to the tail here. Make sure you get a full wrap right at the back, just covering up all of your previous thread wraps. And then bring that back forward. I'm actually just pushing that. So you can see this takes a fair bit of tinsel. Better to make sure you have more than less. But that'll do right there. That's the back half of our fly now. And for the front half, I'm actually not using a body hackle, I'm not using a rib or anything. This is really simple, this fly. This is just purple UV ice dub. And I'm going to take a fairly generous amount of this stuff. Start dubbing in our thread. And the reason I'm going to dub on a generous amount is again, I'm going to pick this stuff out pretty thoroughly. And I want a good number of these fibers to, you know, to some extent sort of pull out and uh, veil the rest of the fly and aid in sort of shaping the body of the fly. So I want enough fibers in there that I can, pl I can uh, pluck a few out and still maintain that body. Like so. So I've come right up to the end of the thicker tubing here. And I'm just going to go ahead, take our dubbing brush, and pick that out a bit. And you can see how that really right away starts tapering, kind of like a hackle on its own right there. All right. Now, first stage for the wing is going to be some pink fox. Nice, real bright, intense pink, kind of similar to that fluoro fiber. As I say, this is not a subtle fly. But interestingly, it seems to work for me actually pretty well, even in clearer water. Um, it's just one of those color combos that seems to work. Not always, but if the fish are into something bright, it's caught a lot of fish. For me and a lot of friends too. So we've got you know a decent sized little clump worth of a uh, fox here. You can pluck out some of the short under fur if you want, but not super critical. This is going to be a, a small starter kind of wing. So I've mentioned this before, but building the taper of our wing here, uh, we're going to do it in stages. And we don't want to tie this in full length right off the bat because then all of our um, all of our winging materials end up sort of being in line with that and we get a square wing. We want a tapered wing. We want a tapered fly, something that looks natural. So we're going to stagger them and start out, we'll start with the first clump about halfway down the tail or so, something like that. So I'm going to measure that up and then just clip off the butt ends with a little, little bit of extra, a little excess there. And the reason for the excess is we're going to reverse tie it. So I've flipped this around, the tip ends are now facing out toward what would be the eye of the fly. And you just want to make sure you get this tied in here in line with the tail, right? So the tail sort of determines the top orientation of the fly. You want to line it up with that. So keep it all in line. A couple wraps on top there to secure. And then we're just going to fold this wing back so you can see how it ends up. It's actually maybe a tad longer than a halfway point of the, the tail, but that'll be fine. We're then going to put on a couple of good tight wraps right in front of that wing to sort of ease it back. Now you can see it's still sticking right up, but that's fine. The reason for that reverse tie is that we get a little more profile with the wing. It sticks up more and it's going to give us more profile in the water. That's going to be eased down with the, the next steps here. So on top of that, 
I've got some purple hackle here. This is just regular old saddle hackle. Just your like woolly bugger kind of hackle. I'm going to find a feather here that has some kind of webbiness to it. I don't want a full-blown schlappen feather, but something like this that's sort of, it's a saddle feather, but it's got, you know, you can see some web down here. Those fibers kind of glob up a little bit. I like that. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to strip off some of this fluff down at the bottom. Like so. And this feather, okay, hopefully get two uses out of the same hackle. So I'm gonna tie it in about the midway point on the hackle here. I've just sort of brushed these fibers back to expose that midpoint. I'm just going to tie that in right in front of that wing. I'm going to take the tip here. I'm gonna fold it back as well and tie it down once more. Make sure it really is locked in there nicely. Like so. And then we're gonna take that hackle, gonna pull these fibers back, maybe fold them back just slightly. And then we're going to put a wrap immediately in front of that wing. So that's one wrap, let's go two wraps. You can play around with the density of this fly for sure. One great thing about hair wings like these is that they do maintain a lot of body in the water. So like if I'm fishing slow water, these do work very well in slower runs and stuff too. But um, if I'm fishing slower water, you know, I really like a hobo spay, something with marabou, something really soft. But that gets pushed down in the water. And sometimes it gets a little slicker and thinner and not, um, it just doesn't have nearly as much profile as we'd like it to be, or to have rather. And a hair wing, maintains that profile. The fibers are much stiffer and maintains the profile there. So you can, as I say, adjust the uh, density of this fly to match your conditions. But generally when I'm looking at, uh, you know, a hair wing fly here, I, um, I'm really thinking fast water here. So I, I generally go a little denser than not, especially on a bright fly like this. So that's our first stage for the wing. Second stage is going to be this is one of my favorite products, Silver Fox. Silver Fox as opposed to the Arctic Fox we used. This is a much longer fiber, so you can compare this to your little Arctic Fox medallion here. Much more length on this stuff. It also has these dark tips, which kind of give you a cool look. I'm going to start out with a similar sized clump to that uh, pink. So I'm just going to pull out a little clump here from the side. Trim it off, like so. And I'm just gonna hold it by the tips and pull out some of these butt ends, the sunder fur. And there we go. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing here. In this case, again, I'm not tying it full length here. I'm actually pull out a couple of these longer guard hairs. Like so. I just wanna eyeball that up to be just a little longer, just a bit than the pink. And that's going to encourage that taper to form. So I'm going to do the same thing, cut those butt ends so that they're just a tad longer than we need them. I'm gonna push them right up against the pink. Get a wrap on there. Again, making sure to keep this as centered on top of the tube as we can, like so. Fold it back, and you can kind of push it back and roll it around to get um, sort of dome over the top of the fly. Add a few tight wraps right in front, not over top, but in front of the hair there, just to ease it back a little bit. So we've got, that's our same hackle. We still have, you can see a little length there. We can work with this, probably get one fly out of every hackle, or if it's a smaller hackle, maybe two. We're just going to take it Tie it in by the tip here. In this case, I don't have enough length to fold it back over, so just really careful to make sure it tied in nice and tight. Pull these fibers back. And we're just gonna put a couple more wraps or however much we can muster out of this hackle. Wrap and a half, we'll call it. There we go. 
And you can see by tying in those hackles, those sort of ease back the wing, right? And you start to get a nicer sort of profile to it like so. And by having these intermittent hackles in here as well, you also add more volume, more body to the wing. So again, it kind of stands up better in the current. Now, uh, just over the top, we're gonna go back to our silver fox here. I'm gonna find some just real nice long fibers. Just the longest, airiest kind of stuff I can. Now you could use, I find the silver fox usually has enough length, but it, you could use other materials. You could use you know, some Icelandic sheep or some snow runner or some craft fur. So I've pulled out nice long fibers, pulling out most of the short stuff. I'm not looking for volume on this last clump. I'm just looking for length, some flow. And I'm going to lay this straight on top. Look at the length here. I want this a little longer. That's looking better, maybe even a little longer. Yeah, I think in around there is about right. I like a long wing, gives you a lot more motion. I don't think you get a ton of short hits but because of it. I think you can usually get those fish to come back too. So in my experience, it's never really been an issue. Yeah. You can see I didn't reverse tie that, I just tied it in straight. If you want to, you could add some flash in there as well, actually. That's what I didn't do here. You can do this before or after this stage. I'm not too fussy on it. We'll add a little in here. This is wing and flash, angel hair, wing and flash, basically the same thing. Wing and flash, maybe a little straighter. Both work very well for this. I'm going to just Pull a few fibers out, very sparse amount. You can just barely see it there. Just lay that over top. Fold that back in. Like so. And then just sort of cut it, a little bit of a taper about the length of the wing. Like so. You can see it just glistening in there. Very sparse. I think sparse is better when it comes to this stuff. And then I usually like to put on a, a little bit of a, a different colored collar. So you can use a saddle or what I have here. This is a whiting wet fly hackle. It's just a hen saddle in black. And I'm just going to grab one of the larger feathers off of here. That one will do. Pluck it out. And I'm going to strip off most of this fluff at the bottom. Again, maybe not all. That fluff does actually have a lot of nice motion to it, so you can certainly incorporate a little bit of it into the fly. And the short fibers up at the top here aren't going to do a whole lot for you, but I do want the longer stuff at the base. So I'm going to part that feather about halfway down, like so. Tie that in just on the side. Fold that tip back, tie it down once more and then snip off the remains. I'm gonna take that feather and just stroking the fibers back to keep them out of the way. Make a few wraps right in front here. that off like so and snip off the excess now you don't have to do this but what I think does add a um, nice bit of life to this fly is um, some eyes so for that where did I put them here here we go these are the pro sport Fisher uh, synthetic substitute jungle cock eyes this specific size is extra small, which I think is a nice size for most flies. And if you haven't worked with these, they're just not backing. So I'm just going to find one here, kind of separate it, pull it off the top, and pull it off the bottom of the card here, like so. So you have this eye, you can see there's a little bit of that kind of papery stuff stuck at the top here, so I'm just going to clean that up 
with my scissors, trim that carefully. Not super important, just for your own confidence there. And then, as I've said before, I like to reverse tie these guys. So just on the side here, I'm going to lay a wrap over top. Sort of tying them on a slight downward angle, if anything, so that when I reverse them, they flow up and with the wing. I'm going to grab a second one for the other side here. Same thing, clean up the tip a little bit. And when I tie this in, I just want to match the length and the angle that I tie it in to the previous. So that when I fold back into the fly, they, uh, they pair up nicely. So don't worry about these little paper ends facing back here. They're gonna get covered up by these eyes when we fold them back. I'm gonna take a little bit of tying wax here. Tying wax, not dubbing wax. Very different purposes with them. And I'm just going to take the one eye Fold it back right over the top of its tag end there. Put a couple wraps over secure and same on the near side. A couple wraps there and then I'm just going to tidy up this head a little bit. And the reason for the wax, I mean partially to secure the eyes, although I don't think they were really going anywhere anyways, but more just to keep a nice tight head. A lot of folks have issues with uh, tube fly heads, they get a little long. Um, because there's no defined end point to them like a hook, right? You can theoretically keep going with your head as long as you want, but it's really nice when you can keep a nice tight head. That tying wax just keeps your thread wraps really nice and tight there. So with that, I'm going to throw on quick whip finish there. Like so, I'll pull that over a vise. I'm just going to trim my tubing here to be just like half a millimeter short of our thread wraps. Like I said before, this uh, eye, the eye, the hole in the tube does kind of get closed up sometimes when you cut it just by the jaws of the scissors pressing down on it. So I push it back on quickly to open it back up, open the tube back up. And then you just want to grab a lighter and holding it just short of the flame, just singe it. And by singeing it, like so, the plastic actually curls back. And that will keep the thread wraps from slipping off the end here. It just gives you a little, little bit of a barrier. Now on the back here, because we didn't really use the full length of this tubing, this is very long here. It's kind of strange looking. And what we want to do here, this is another tube similar kind of pattern. You can see where you want the, the hook to come out to here is a little shy of the wing. If it's way, way back, the, like on this guy, I'll just pop the same hook on here to show you. Now, if you have a hook way back here, for one, I mean, it just looks awkward. For two, it's going to drag this end of the fly down and your, hook's got, your fly is going to ride on angle. We want it to get a little straighter. So we're gonna trim this. Maybe a, you know, five, six mil back from the, uh, the tag that we tied in. So that's the pearl tinsel. So we have a length something like that. Now if we pop that hook in, see what it looks like. That's much more in line with what we like to see there. If you want to finish this off, the one last thing that I would do, pop that back in there, just take some head cement and just go right around your thread wraps there. And that's how you tie the flare tube. Give it a go.